Hey everyone, it's your girl Carmen and today's video is going to be how I do my eyebrows and my daily makeup routine. As you can see, I have nothing on my face, so you're going to see from beginning to end. So let's get started. The first thing I put on my face is my foundation. And the foundation I'm going to use today, which is my number one brand line, it's the Revlon Color Stay. I'm in the buff color. And so I use these sponges to apply my makeup. There's a brush out there that I know is amazing. My daughter has it. She loves it. And I'm going to need to get it because I have arthritis in my hands. So using my strength and pressing into the sponge to apply my makeup really takes a toll on my hands. So it's going to be something that I'm definitely going to need to start doing. But this is the way I've always done it. And this is the way I'm going to do it today. So I'm going to pour some on my spongy here. So I just kind of usually pour it out to where I feel it's just enough. You kind of know your face. You know how much you need, how much will cover your face. So, and I'll show you how much that is for me. So it's about that much for me. And then what I do is I fold the sponge in half. So I get a blended effect on the sponge. And then I just start wherever my hand touches my face, which is pretty much my cheek area and so I go around my head line I try to go into the hair but not really trying to touch the hair because as you know Revlon color stay and things like Mac they're heavy coverage and so they can make your hair look beige or gray looking or whatever so I try just to make sure to cover it so there's not a line but yet not really trying to touch the hair so I go three times over the lid that's a part of the OCD that I have to me it's so normal and so right but to other people it might seem so crazy so I go three times under each lid or more at least three times though and then I go around my nose above my nose and in the creases of my nose and the bottom where my nostrils are. I go over my lips and around the lips, back around the face, close to my ear line. And then we cannot forget the neck. We must blend into the neck. If you get the tone that's closest to your, um, the color foundation that's closest to your skin tone, blending your neck shouldn't really be difficult. It's when you get a couple of shades that are off your actual skin tone that can make it oh, I don't know why I feel like I got hair right there they can make it difficult to blend so that's pretty good right there and then what I do next is my foundation which I use the Mac Studio Fix the NC20 and I use the spun as well to um, apply it and I go around the same pattern that I did with my foundation So three or more times over the lid under the I creases of the nose, the nostrils, the lips, all that good stuff. Back around the cheek and the face area because that's where you have more skin or foundation there. So you want to make sure you really get it all covered. And then the neck as well. And I'm pretty well blended. So I think I'm good. And then the next thing I do is the blush. And so um, the blush that I'm going to be using today is kind of a mix. This is, um, I believe it was one of my matte bronzers, but I use it as blush. So I kind of swirl into there. This is the brush that I use. Swirl into there and just do that face that you make so you can find your the right place for your cheekbones. To the other side back to the other side and then since I have pink on pink on today I kind of like to have a little bit of pink I normally like brown bronzer kind of color but I do a little dust of pink just to give it that finishing effect and this is elf and it's the pink blush. I don't know if you can see it there. So lightly dust it on. You don't want it to be too heavy. And then I do my eyebrows. So I take my spoolie. As you can see, my eyebrows, they can be really thick. Really thick if I let them grow that thick. But they're very sparse, so I don't like that look. But I don't like it to be like a thin line 
drawn in effect so I do have eyebrows and they're kind of more even more sparser when it goes towards the end I know that I have some hairs there but it's hard to tell the one side has even more hairs on the end than the other that's just how my bras go so I kind of just brush it up and then kind of guide it to where it needs to go and then I'm gonna take my I normally use my Maybelline, I think I said that in my makeup collection, my Maybelline eyebrow pencil which has been around forever and I've never found anything as good as that. Um, the second best would be this one which I love by Revlon. It's the Brow Fantasy in Brunette. So if you can see that. And so this is where I draw my um, outer line. So I take it from where my eyebrow starts. And then I draw it as close to my eyebrow shape as possible. And then I take the top, and even there, the hair is a little sparse there right now, I can see where the top of my eyebrow is. So I take it and draw that line and kind of curve my natural eyebrow shape. And then I do the same to the other side. It's hard to do it in here. I normally do my makeup in my bathroom most of the time because the lighting in there is just so good. I don't really have, even though I have the window open and it's bright and sunny and I have my bedroom light on, it still doesn't give me that good as lighting as I really need. And then I just kind of go in there with a light feathered hand, kind of go in there and start shading it in. And then go out to the corner and I always make sure I have q-tips on hand because I always know I have to go and correct some spots especially now that I'm not doing in good lighting area I'm really gonna need that so and I don't know if you remember but a lot of beauty gurus and I'll tell you as a licensed cosmetologist that um, your eyebrows are definitely not twins and they're not even sisters. They should be like cousins. If anything, like cousins. They're not supposed to be exactly like. Like I have one is a little bit more, tends to look higher than the other and maybe a little bit thicker than the other. This one is my thicker one. And sometimes you could go in there and if it's because of the lining of the pencil, you could go in there and kind of get it closer to the size and shape of your other one. So, I know I'm definitely going to need a Q-tip on the right one because I could see right in this area where the eyebrow pencil kind of went too far down. And then in this area, I think it went kind of too high. My One of my eyebrows is higher than the other, but I can tell when it's just higher because the pencil, my hand was maybe a little heavy heavier at the time that I drew this above line here and so I have to kind of get it back to not as high so pretty much that way and then I kind of go in and if there's anything that I need to fix especially right in this area because that's where your arch is that's what you want to make sure looks nice this one has some more shading than it's needed right there this one needs a little higher arch so I have to kind of curve in there as much as possible so then after this I use my bra bar which is a salon perfect bra, bra bar not the other bra bar which is this one here I love it this is the best one that's worked for me you can see I hit pan on the base and my natural hair color is dark brown and then sometimes I use a little bit lighter brown and I'm really hitting pan. I don't use this color as much but I'm sure I'm going to need to. And so um, I take my eyebrow brush which is, I believe this one's the e.l.f. Yep, small angled brush. And so then I take the color that I'm going to use which today I'm probably going to use the dark brown. And then I just start kind of 
when I start in here, you want it not to be so heavy-handed, just a feather touched of the eye, of the brush. And then as you go further and further into the eyebrow, then you want to get a little bit heavier handed and more darker on the filling in or the shading, whatever you want to call it. Then I make sure that my line is again defined. And I can see that there's like something right there. And sometimes it could be like there's a little hair there that you just got to pluck that you've just plucked but you don't realize that there's that hair there until you're shaping your eyebrows and you go oh I got to get rid of that little hair and so that's what I'm gonna have to do right now there's a few hairs that you don't notice until you Sometimes until you're doing your eyebrows, and I can see a few of them here. Okay, so just dust it off, and then what I do is at the end, I kind of um, dip it in a little bit of moisture, and then kind of define the ends. And so then I go back to the other side. I hope you guys can see this clearly. Because like I said, my lighting is not good. And when you're trying to do something that you normally just do in the mirror. And you're trying to do it in front of a video or a camera. It sometimes can be like really difficult. So I'm really hoping get a little bit moisture to define that end. So I can still tell that this side is a little bit thicker. So I'm either going to have to really try to define that top line down. Or I'm going to need to like raise this line a little bit thicker on top. See? I just made it just a little bit more heavier handed. And you have to go in to define that so it's kind of this effect so that's what it's going to be for now and I'll go in and define it more with the um, concealer so and this is the brush which is also elf brush that I use to define underneath the eyebrow with my concealer the one that I love that I've been using for a while now is I got this at Big Lots and I believe it may be LA Colors or Color Mates really a cheap brand but I'm telling you I love it to death and I have your expensive ones medium range ones and your cheap ones and this one just has worked good for me I just love it especially for my under the bra area so I'm gonna like outline it just like I did with the actual bra lining and this just gives it a little bit more definition to the outer lining of your bra so anything that looked a little imperfect imperfect becomes a little bit more perfect so I try to get as close to the eyebrow shape as possible and then I kind of just blend it in to my eyelid or brow bone, brow bone can't speak today so then I'll do the other side as well and kind of just get really close to the shape of the eyebrow and just a thing of going back and forth until you're really pleased with how it's looking and where it's at kind of blending in to your um, brow bone and eyelid
so it's hard to tell <laughs> in the camera. So hopefully that's good. Looks good so far. So then I go back in with another one of my um, e.l.f. brushes and it's the flat kind of rounded one and then the same one here and then I have others I really like a shimmery base this is not too much of a shimmery base a little bit but I use all kinds as long as it's in that color range maybe a little bit darker a little bit lighter but it's your base color I'll use different ones I have them in different palettes the Naked 3, 2, 1 has it all of my CoverGirl L'Oreal, I could find it just about anywhere. Um, I'll try to show you an example of that. Here's one here, which I already hit pan. And that one's um, Revlon as well. So this will be my base for my whole eye, bra, bone, and eyelid. And then, of course, I go and I start that same outer lining of the bra. Make sure that the concealer is covered and we have a stable base. And then I just follow it through on the whole eyelid and crease and you name it. Just so that the whole eye um, is covered. So I, just, I start from the inner corner and just work my way out. And I keep um, making sure that I define that. Um, under the eyebrow as much as possible, as many chances as I can. Then I do the same with the other side, starting with under the eyebrow, giving it a, a nice base, going back to the inner corner of the eye, working my way out. And then the eyelid. And then making sure that the outer end is very well covered. Back to the eyebrow bone. And you could kind of use your baby finger and kind of make sure that it's spread out. So that's good for now. And then what I use is I finally go to whatever color I'm going to wear today. Remember the color coordination thing? So I have a pink shirt on, so I'm going to wear pink. So um, I'm going to use there's a pink color in here that I'm going to use, which is the Profusion. Then I'm going to use my um, it's another brush. I believe this one's by e.l.f. too. It's, I've had it for so long, it's kind of wearing down. So then I take that. You want to blow it because otherwise it could get on your, your face. So I kind of just, my main color is always in the crease. Unless I'm wearing a, like a black. Then I'll kind of just do it on the lid and do a lighter color in the base. But my main color always goes on the... So I kind of do that. And so that pink for me didn't happen to really be the pink that I'm feeling today. So I'm going to either do my Naked 3 palette or my blush. my um, The Maybelline blush nudes. So I'm going to go with my um, Naked 3. And of course it's the pink shades. And so I use the Love Buzz, the color Buzz. So I'm going to do Buzz. And I'm going to shape that crease. And you know the shape of your, your crease and where there's the bra bone, between the bra bone and the lid. 
So I make sure I really get in that crease right there and then heavy on the outer part. A little bit more. Focusing on the crease especially and then bringing it up towards the brow bone. Then I'll do the other side. Focusing mainly on the crease to your outer and inner part going up towards the bra bone. And then I kind of see where I'm at if I need to put a little bit more in certain places, which I could see here. I need to put a little bit higher towards the bra bone. Dusting it off. And one thing that you're taught in beauty college is when you're doing makeup for other people, you don't want to blow on the brush because it's your air on the brush. And that person could be sensitive or allergic and just, it's your germs, not theirs. So you don't really want to do that. Not that I want germs on my own face, but it's me. So just it's a slight blow not spitting on it it's just a slight blow to kind of dust it off if you're doing a professional makeup on a person you want to just shake it off dust it by shaking it off so I didn't blow it there but um, I knew I had just enough product right there so I think that's going to be enough right there for my eyeshadow and then what I usually could do is I do like a little bit different shade on the bottom so I'll use this factory color here and then kinda color the lid a little bit just to give it a different color there and then kinda just go back and forth not too much just to give it a different um, shade to combine with So that's pretty good there. And then what I do is that same brush that I used to do my um, my base, which I don't know where the heck did I put the brush? Oh, right here. The one that I used for the base. And then I kind of just take the crease color and just kind of shade it in, but lifting it up. So it's still a, a good amount of, on there and close to the... Um, bra bone without taking too much off. If you want, if you want to lower it, then of course you want to go in to the crease, not out. But I want to keep the mount that I have, so I just kind of want to go in. And sometimes you'll have to go back like this one. I think I should have kept a little bit more on. So kind of just kind of re-put it back in but a, a lighter kind of thing and then sometimes you might have to go back and forth and kind of get it where, it where you want it so I'm just blending it in Oop. okay so that's good and that I used the Naked 3 oh sorry about that and so I didn't really have to use the um, blush nudes right here so that's good enough for me and then I take that sponge that I used for my foundation and my powder and just kind of dust off in case any of the pink color got on there and then kind of get some more powder and kind of just make sure that that's well blended in after the shadow that's just what makes me feel like everything's okay and then um, I do my eyeliner, which today I'll just do like a, just kind of a, a black. I like to have fun and do colors. Um, this one I'll just do black for today. 
and then I just start on the outer line and then go back from the inner corner back towards the outer and I kind of do that back and forth I'll do it out towards in in towards out and then I give it a break and I go to the other eye again starting from the corner working my way in And then I'll go back to the other side. And then I'll do the opposite. Then I'll do in versus working out. So I make sure I have even coverage. Same on the other side. Went into the eye a little bit. You know, back in the day, we used to use that Maybelline eyebrow pencil put a lighter to it and then go in the inner eye. Now it's all the outer eye. I could guess I could still do that. So that's my eyeliner. Then I'm going to do my mascara, which I start off with this one that I just bought at um, Forever 21. It's Voluminizing Mascara, but it has argon oil in it. And as you can see, I don't really have a lot of eyelashes. They're very small. Let me try to get really close. Can you see? I mean, it's a basic eyelashes, but they are really small. And the thing is, everybody wants them bigger. So I felt like this can help my eyelashes grow a little bit or at least be healthy. So I start off in the corner and I do like 20 strokes. There goes your OCD again. Just to form the eyelashes, just to bring them out and not hide in that corner. And then I just start from out to in, and I'll do the strokes as many as I need it or comfortable. Or like the 20 is my basic. I kind of lost count because I'm talking, but that's okay. I'll know where I kind of am comfortable with it. So as you see, it's not making my eyelashes, even though it says voluminizing, it's not really making my eyelashes long. Get that out of there touched my face a little bit but I feel it's a base to get it started and like I said it has the argon oil in it my dog is wanting to get out of the room I try to tell him to get out before I even get started filming but it's actually a he a she sorry her name is Lady. She's so beautiful. But she doesn't listen. So I let my poor lady out. She was just, she hears my husband. My husband just got home from work. So she's crazy about him. So she can feel when he's coming. She hears his voice and she goes knuckles and she will beg to get out of the room. So I had a pause to let her out. Uh oh, kind of stuck my eye a little bit. Okay. Not too bad, but it's so hard to see when you're on camera and trying to focus. So, 20 basic strokes if possible if you don't lose count like I'm doing. But I'll know what feels right. And then I'll start working my way in, going to the middle area. going to the inner corner of the eye bringing those eyelashes out as much as possible because that's the one thing that I've been on a journey to find the right mascara and I really haven't found the right one but the one I'm gonna put on next has been the best so far of all times in this years and years of journey of trying to find the right one but it's still I need to put two or three on to make them as long as possible and I'll dip in again That's another thing. See, um, we normally just dip back into eye 
our mascara when you're doing somebody else's makeup especially professionally or you just doesn't matter doing family friends doing anybody's makeup you really should use the disposable makeup brushes and you just dip in once and then if you need again you need to get another um, disposable brush you can't be dipping back in and out. especially if you're going to be using it on other people if it's their own okay great then you could redip but if it's your makeup or you're going to be using it on other people then you don't double dip with the mascara and like I said you use disposable mascaras so I'm just going to go a little bit more not so much on the bottom again because my bottom lashes are really really small just to kind of see if I could bring that base out a little bit more okay so then the next mascara I'm going to use is the L'Oreal Voluminous this has been the best like I said I've been on this journey for years and years and years and this has been the best one that makes it look as long as it can be as thick as it can be it's waterproof which I love waterproof mascara and it's just the best one so far if you have any recommendations like I said in my uh, makeup collection video of a mascara that you believe can help me and work for me I would so appreciate it because I'm game for it so then I start again at the end getting those corner lashes out and I do it point wise not this wise but point wise to make sure I get all those little hairs out and then I go flat and I try to go to the root and then grab all the out ones. So I have a strong pull. And you can start to see that they're looking a little bit longer in the neck corner. And then back and forth. And then back pointy. Then you're going to go once down here. And I kind of just stroke them from the end to the corner eye. And then once pulling them down. Then I'm going to the other eyelashes on the other side point pulling those corner thin hairs out then flat going to the root pulling it out back to the root pulling it out stroking and stroking root out root out and then you just keep stroking root out and then you just keep stroking so I'm going to go back to the other one give that one a break out of the corner here 